In this video, I'll show you the major visual changes to the user interface, which is one of the major changes in this version of Motion. Like in the new Final Cut, the interface has been refined, so icons are simpler, there are fewer shadows and little boxes for tools to hide in, and overall it is darker to bring focus to the content. Several things, though, have moved. The tools, which used to be down here and some of them over here, have all moved to these areas below the viewer. Your standard tools are all here, the 3D tool and the hand, which is the pan tool, and the zoom, as well as the walk 3D view, are all just here. To the right, you'll find all of your creation tools. So you can create rectangles, circles, lines, uh, Bezier's or B splines, you've got your paintbrush tool, and you can create text and masks there as well. To the right, you'll see the full screen button, but some of the other buttons which were there have now moved. So looping is now down here, along with the record button. So for recording keyframes as you change them, that's now moved to here. There's also a mute button which joins them. Just above, these buttons are largely the same, except that the plus button, which made a new group, has moved and become Add Object. You can now create cameras, lights, drop zones, rigs, and generators, instead of just groups. Down below, the timeline hasn't really changed that much. The shortcut's still the same, as is the keyframe window and the audio, though I don't have any audio to show you in this one. To the left, you might have noticed already that the file browser is gone, and that's not a huge change, but I'll cover that more in the next video. The HUD is still the same as ever. It'll respond to what you've got selected and give you a different display, though you can always hide it if it's getting in the way. And at the top of the interface, we've got a toolbar. Now, this is a somewhat standard looking toolbar, and indeed you can right click to customize it, just like you can in many other apps. Unfortunately, all of the available buttons are already in the toolbar. So unless you want to hide some of them or rearrange this toolbar, which you could if you wanted to, there's probably not a whole lot of reason to come in here. You can, of course, hide the text if you'd rather save a little bit of space, but I'll leave it visible. One useful improvement is that under Window, Window Layout, you've got a new Cinema Mode. This juggles the interface, and if you want a nice full height inspector as well as a full height project pane to access layers, media, and audio, then this could be pretty useful. It's been designed to give you access to lots and lots of items in the layers panel, and certainly if you're working with keyframes, the timeline window is really not the best for this. You might choose to hide it in that case, and maybe show or hide the keyframes as you need them. One thing which I really like about this mode is that if you don't need the project pane, you can hide it. And then I probably would bring the timeline back, and this would be appropriate if I only need to access one or two of the things I've got in the timeline, but for which the length of the timeline is more important. The interesting thing about this mode is that having the inspector on the right is very reminiscent of Final Cut 10, and if you're new to motion, you might enjoy this workflow, just because it's more similar to what you're familiar with. Now, there are a couple of other small changes here. Uh, number one is that there is no reset button in the parameters in the inspector anymore. Instead, you'll have to go to this little menu and choose the first item, so it's just a little bit harder to reset a parameter now. Also, if you've got a property which has a random seed, and I'll just add, for example, a random motion to this rectangle, then the random seed button is now just a little pair of arrows rather than a random button. So mostly minor changes. If you're an experienced motion user, it probably won't take you too long to get used to this. However, if you're working in the standard mode, the missing file browser could actually cause you one or two issues, even if you didn't use it very heavily. And I'll show you that in the next video.